So tonight I'd like to talk about, or talk to you about following Jesus equals trust. Following Jesus equals trust. In a, at St. Martin's at the moment, we're going through a series all about following Jesus. And the first talk was about passion. The second talk was about freedom. And this talk is about trust. You see, when you're following Jesus, you've got to trust him that he knows where he is going. And in a minute, I want to come to our Bible talk. But I just want to just give you, I guess, a bit of background, really, is that actually as a follower of, of, of Jesus, whatever we're going to be looking at, we're going to be always looking through the lens of the cross. Why the cross? You see, the reason why the cross is why we follow Jesus is because at the cross, Jesus did what we like to call the great exchange, where we Christians believe that God, who was fully human and fully God, he died on the cross for us. And it's a story or part of the story which we hear again and again, especially if you've been a seasoned Christian for a while, is that, yeah, we understand uh, what it's like um, that Jesus died and rose again. But I want us just to remember that always as a Christian, a bit like my children um, in, a, in a way when they love the same storybook again and again. My, my children at the moment love Mog at the moment and we can read the story of Mog again and again. And every time we, uh, we read that story, uh, we laugh at the funny bits, we, sh we, we look at it from different angles. Maybe that's the same if you're looking at Shakespeare or Tolkien or, or, or Mog. Whatever, whatever you're re reading in at the moment, again and again, reading these, this literature is so important, it's so exciting. And so it is with reading about the cross, is that we should never, ever go too far from the cross. Because following Jesus is all about trusting that Jesus has our back from dying on the cross and rising again. We as Christians we were reminded that actually that when Jesus died on the cross, as, as someone once said, it was like a zillion hells were put onto Jesus. That sense of all the torment, all the pain uh, that should have been ours was put on Jesus' shoulders on the cross and he died and then he rose again. An illustration of why we should trust Jesus is a bit like this. Um, someone once said this illustration. It kind of goes part of the way. Is that in the sense that we take what, what is Jesus's and Jesus takes what is ours. That is what it's called, as I said a minute ago, ago the great exchange. Imagine this story here. You're in the, the father, God the Father's house. And God the Father says, son, daughter, you can go out. You can do whatever you like. Um, you can just enjoy the land, uh, but whatever you do is don't come back muddy. Don't come back muddy. That's all you've all you got to do. He says, sure, Papa, sure, God, Father in heaven, I'll go out and enjoy life and I'll, I won't come back muddy. But you go out and you play football and you enjoy football. If you're anything like my son, Ben, who, who plays uh, for Coney Heath, he was really muddy today. And if you love football and you're going out playing muddy, uh, play football and you're getting really muddy, you, 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 you forget the rule that you're not meant to get muddy to get back into God the Father's house. And it's a bit like um, um, you've had a great time and all your friends have gone home. Oh, it's time to go home myself. And so you go home and then you realise, oh, no. Oh no, I can't get back into the Father's house, God the Father's house, because the rule says I can't get muddy. But on the way back and you're thinking, what am I going to do? Am I going to just stay outside? On the way back, you see God the Son, Jesus. Jesus in, a, in a completely white clothes. Your clothes were white, but they got really muddied from going out and, and not uh, keeping with the rules that God has. And when Jesus meets you at the gate and says, oh no, you're really muddy. You're, you're, real, you're in a real mess. What's going to happen? Well, I can't go into the God the Father's house. I can't go to his house. But Jesus says, don't worry. I'll exchange your clothes for my clothes. You can have the clean clothes. You can go in and I'll stay outside. That's what Jesus did on the cross. And that's why we're called to follow him because he took our pain. He took our muddy clothes. He took our crown of thorns and he gave us a crown of glory. 
And that is the amazing thing about following Jesus, is that every time we go to God the Father in prayer, he sees Jesus, his, his son. God the Father, Jesus are one. We have one God, but in three persons, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And when we take Jesus' uh, um, crown, we're reminded that he took our, a crown of thorns. Some people wear a cross on their um, on their uh, on their on their chest, um, a golden cross. But imagine it; it's actually kind of uh, quite bizarre, really, because really it's the same as as having um, an electric chair or a syringe filled with poison, taking that lethal injection for us. Jesus died and rose again. And you know, uh, while we should trust God, I want to come onto the story in a minute um, of of Jesus walking on uh, water with Peter. We should trust him because Jesus gave uh, his all for us. He said on the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus, the son, has never been separated from his father, but on the cross he was. And we're reminded again tonight that God gave us his all in his son, Jesus. You know, some of us here may experience what it feels like to, to be dumped. Uh, you may have had a boyfriend or a girlfriend, and that could be quite painful. Maybe you've, you've had a, a, a job, and maybe you've been let down at work, and, and someone has treated you badly and said bad things about you, and that is painful. You may have lost a job, or you may be going through an illness, or your, 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 your money is not as good as it should be, and that is painful. But it's another level when you lose your spouse or when you lose a child. And it is of that level that God the Father and God the Son were separated. And if I'm able to, it was even more than that. God himself becoming one of us, dying on the cross. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And if Jesus would do that for you and for me, then we should be, our response should be trust. Even though it doesn't feel like it's going to be um, a good ending, we're going to trust you are good. You are good. Your love never ends. And so on that line, I'm going to come to you with the story about walking on water. I'm going to read this from the message here. You may have not heard this version. Uh, and I'll try and uh, uh, read it to you in a way that is fresh as if it's the first time. Have a listen in your mind's eye. Imagine you being there. Matthew chapter 14. As soon as the meal was ended, he insisted that the disciples get in the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the people. With the crowd dispersed, he climbed the mountain so he could be by himself and pray. He stayed there alone late, late into the night. Meanwhile, he was far out to sea when the wind came up against them and they were battered by the waves. At about four o'clock in the morning, Jesus came towards them, walking on the water. They were scared out of their wits. Ah, a ghost, they said, crying out in terror. But Jesus was quick to comfort them. Courage, it is me. Don't be afraid. Peter suddenly, bold as brass, said, Master, if it's really you, call me to come to you on the water. He said, come ahead. Come ahead, Peter. Jumping out of the boat, everyone looking at him, thinking he's mad. Peter walked on the water to Jesus. But when he looked down at the wave churning beneath his feet, he lost his nerve and started to sink. He cried, Master, save me. Jesus didn't hesitate. He reached down and grabbed his hands. Then he said, faint heart. What got you? What got into you? The two of them climbed into the boat and the wind died down. The disciples in the boat, having watched the whole thing, worshipped Jesus, saying, this is it. You are God's son for sure. On return, they beached the boat at Gennesaret. When the people got wind that he was back, they sent out words through the neighbourhood and round, rounded up all the sick who asked for permission to touch the edge of his coat. And whoever touched him was healed. Such an amazing story. And I'd like just to bring out two strands from that story, two brushstrokes of faith over your life tonight as we reflect on following Jesus equals trust. We've looked at the fact that following Jesus equals trust in the cross. The next thing I would like us to think about is following Jesus is trusting 
in his word, trusting in his word. Billy Graham said to all his children, his grandchildren in his will, every day, grandchildren, every day, read God's word. Every time you read God's word, he said to his grandchildren, Billy Graham, your, your life will change. Why? Because sometimes we forget the promises of God. Do we trust God's word or do we trust other people's words about our lives? Do we trust that Jesus says that you're more than a conqueror or do you actually put um, in cement people's cr uh, criticism about you? Do you trust God's word when he says come out and walk on the water or do you actually hear other people's uh, words saying actually there's no point because you failed before you're going to fail again? Do you trust in God's word or do you allow people to determine your destiny? I encourage you, as I encourage myself daily, is don't allow other people to determine your future, your destiny, the way that God has, has, has put uh, yeah, his, his seal of approval on you. Allow God to do the work, not allow others to rub out that seal of approval. You know, I'm going to become um, something called a team rector in Alden and Radler and Shenley. And I'm not, um, um, uh, we're going to say, uh, naive to know that there's probably people, I don't know of anybody because I believe everybody loves me. But there must be people out there, if I allow uh, my, my blinkers to, to take their gaze, to say he's not good enough, he's not worthy enough. Well, look at what he's done at St. Martin. Surely he can't do anything good in Alden and Radler and Shenley. But I don't. I look to Jesus. And I say, Jesus, you've called me this far. It's amazing you have. I'm going to walk out on water just like Peter. You see, the promises that Jesus has put on your life, there is countless promises in the scripture and throughout your life. You're not called to remember for a minute, go through your mind and forget. No, you're called to write them down, meditate on them. You're called to, to hear those words again and again, be still and know that I am God. You're called again and again to hear those words that says, for I have plans for you to prosper you, to heal you, a great future for you. You're not called just to hear them and then rub them out and then live by sight. You see, the other disciples could have walked out on the water, but it was Peter who actually took Jesus at his word and said, it says, call me out. If you call me out, I'll come. He called him out and he came. And so I say that all the words that God has put in you, don't forget in your moments of crisis, where it is when people say bad things about you, when there's storms that come your way, when there is this crisis after crisis about maybe your children, your health, your finance, whatever it is. I've been recently watching a film called Sully. And uh, you may have heard about this film about uh, uh, Chesney uh, Sullenberger, who uh, was a, um, a seasoned pilot. And um, he was driving a plane over the, uh, in New York City and just over the Hudson River. And he was just taking off. And all of a sudden, a load of birds came flying in and knocked the, the, um, the two engines out. And everybody was saying, oh, what am I going to do? Well, what's going to happen? Oh, no, it's, it's going to be a crash. It's going to be totally, uh, uh, everyone is going to die. But Sully, as he was known, he remembered all the promises, all the words his instructors have told him over the years. He had a double check with his, his uh, um, assistant uh, and pilot and, and, and the words in the instruction booklet were the same as well. It says, go and fly that plane and land it on the Hudson River. And uh, all the simulators said, no, you're crazy. All the people thought this is really bizarre. But he trusted in his instinct and also he trusted in all the words that were before him and he landed the plan safely. Another person who I heard was um, in the Second World War and uh, he went out on lots of different um, um, training runs with his instructor and the instructor said if you come into a storm you've got to trust your instruments. Don't look out the window 
trust your instruments, trust all the gauges, trust all the things that you've learned, all the good words, a bit like Sully. But on this one here, when he was going out on a trial run, he came into a massive storm and everything was going wrong. And all his training went out of the window. And he was looking at the storm and he just didn't know what to do. He couldn't, he couldn't put the plane down. His instructor was with him as it was a training uh, session. And he decided, the, train, uh, the trainer said, I'm going to put a big blanket over the window so you can't see. All you can do is gently hear all the storms around. You can't see them. Now I want you to trust your instruments that are ahead of you. Look at all the things that are around you. The plane, unlike in the, in the story of Sully, the, pl or the plane is in perfect order. All you need to do is trust your instructor, trust all the words that you've learnt and put it into practice. And sure enough, this World War II, who became a seasoned pilot and did great things in the war, he trusted by faith and not by sight. And so we as Christians are called to walk on water. We're called to fight our Goliaths, but it's not by sight, but it's by faith. We will get nowhere in life or we'll be stunted in our faith growth if we just trusted in people's words about you. People's words about you are like the weather. Some people will say good things about you. Sometimes it'll be bad. If you trust your own feelings, sometimes there'll be great things. You say, yeah, I'm feeling great. I've had my third coffee. Or you may be feeling, oh my goodness, I feel so, so bad. But you were created to do the impossible because you've got seeds of greatness put inside you by Jesus. And I encourage you to hear what Jesus said to Peter are words for you in season now. Come out of the boat. Come follow me, says Jesus, on the waters. Not only do we trust in, in Jesus on the cross, but we trust in Jesus with the words that are imprinted in our soul from the past and in the present. From things he said by the Spirit, but also by things that are said in the Word. Like Jesus saying, come out on the, on the, on the waters with me. The final brushstroke of faith I want to, to brush over your life today is trusting him in his word, yes, on the cross, absolutely, but also in experiences too. We're called to, to have a catalogue of experiences where we can trust in God when it is tough. You know, when Peter was uh, out on the boat and he fell, you know, the other people could have laughed and went, oh, Peter, you fell. You didn't trust in the Lord. Oh, dear, you're not like Moses or David in the past. Hey, he was uh, he was the only water um, walker that I know of in Scripture. He went into the boat with Jesus. You see, they went back onto their next part and you saw that Jesus was healing many and they did amazing things. And in fact, all the disciples, one after another, did amazing things. But the only one who had the experience of walking on water was Peter. And he took that to the grave. That was, I believe, in my heart, one of the reasons why, Jesus, uh, why Peter was able to turn the three uh, times he doubted Jesus into an amazing affirmation of faith and was able to leave the church because of that water walker mo moment. You in your life have had these water walker in moments. That's a bit of a tongue twister, isn't it? Um, and you will have them in the future too. And you're called to hold on to them when your faith gets battered by the storms of life. I hold on to the time when I remember being filled by the Holy Spirit in the Toronto blessing of 1995. I hold on to the times of, of when I'm, uh, my children were born. When, I'm, when I um, married Ali, my uh, amazing, beautiful wife. I hold on to the times when I went through cancer and I've come out the other side. Not saying that I'm some kind of amazing miracle, um, it, you know, because of my faith. But I've had that journey. And if you're going through cancer right now, I say to you, hold on to Jesus in this most sweetest of journeys. These are beautiful experiences of you walking with Jesus. And I encourage you to keep a journal of all these and to look over these. You are a water walker, just like Peter. Just like, just this week, I'll just give you this example that it's not just for the past or the, or the future, but for the present. 
if you have listened to my talk, which I'll say, hey, that's, that's 10, uh, 10 St. Martin's points, if you have, from this morning, where um, I talked about, I left my bag up in Welland Garden City, and I was talking about loss and how God can redeem a loss. Well, I can tell you today that I've been reunited with my bag. I left my bag just to let you know. Um, in a, after a great big walk, the car went, the car alarm went off, and I went, oh my goodness! Quick, sort the car alarm off. Brilliant, excellent. Okay, kids. Okay, Ali, let's get in the car. Let's go home. And I left my bag. There was probably the bag was worth a lot of money. The journal, which has six months, all my COVID um, notes, reflections were in there. Um, I had a fountain pen, a credit card, all the children's coats. It mounted to over two hundred pounds, probably including the bag and the fountain pen, and 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 priceless notes of my journal, which I would have never would have been able to get back. But I trusted God. God, I just said, God, whatever happens, I'm going to worship you. Whatever happens, I'm going to allow this to speak words of encouragement. On this occasion, as I went, I felt God say to me, go up to, um, to Welland Garden City. Go and knock on the door to see if the cinema has your bag. Cinema, that is really bizarre. I never went to the cinema. I went to the car park near the cinema. There's other shops. There was the library. There was the police station nearby. Uh, there was John Lewis. I could have, could have been any of those. But I went up last night, knocked on the door. There was no one there. It's a 25-minute car journey there and a 25-minute back. And I thought, oh, maybe I should just give up. Maybe I should just, just write the whole lot off. It's just not worth the pain again and again. But I felt God say to me, go again. Go up and knock on that door again. I thought, okay, Lord, if you're calling me, I will go. Not quite like walking on water, but I had to go through a lot of water because it was wet today and go up again. This time the cinema was open. I, uh, with my face mask on, I, I, I went in and said, I know it sounds bizarre. But in the car park round the corner um, yesterday, I lost a bag. And they said, a bag, do you say? And I thought, I think I'm on a winner here. And they said, yeah, a bag. And I said, a North Face bag. A North Face bag. And I thought they were going to have a joke. They said, no, actually, we haven't. I'm only, I'm only teasing with you. They said, yeah, we've got that. A traffic warden said, can you look after this bag? And it was amazing. Absolutely brilliant. I was able to be reunited in my bag and I thought, wow, thank you, God. You took me on this journey of faith to keep on praying. But the journey didn't end there. I felt God say to me in my, my heart of hearts that, Daniel, when you feel lost, when you feel far from God, remember the bag. Remember how much you thought about the bag. You loved that bag. You dreamt about the bag. You talked about the bag. You even prayed about the bag. You even probably, if you could, you, you would have taken, you know, drawn pictures about the bag. Well, I say that I love you more than that bag. And I will seek you out more than, than you sought out that bag. You went up to Will and Garden City twice looking for that bag. Well, I went to the cross for you. I will go anywhere for you, Daniel. And I say that for you as an encouragement. You may be feeling lost right now. God says, I will seek you out more than your most valued prized possession. Why? Because you are amazing. You are incredible. You are the prize, the apple of God's eye. You may be, you know, come to the end of this talk if you've been with me and say, well, Dan, I've been through so many bad experiences. Oh, my faith is so battered. I hear that you say to trust in the cross, to trust in God's word and think of those experiences. But I'm just not there right now. I just say to you today, wherever you are, is to focus on Jesus. It may be hard, but your future may depend on it. Other people's future may depend on it. You've got to do your part in following Jesus by faith. Just a little bit of faith. He started a good word in you. Remember this. God's not surprised where you are in, uh, in your journey that moment. He's not like freaking out saying, oh my goodness, look at that person. He, is, he or she is so ill. Oh no, that person's got, he's run out of money. Help. No, he's calm. He's collected. Why? Because he trusts in you. He trusts in me to walk on water. And when it's hard, he will hold you steady. He'll hold you hard, like my black bag, like the, the, uh, the person in the plane. He will get you to the finishing line. Just trust in the instructor, trust in his word. Know that everything will turn out well in the end.